Getting around a Mushroom Kingdom can be quite difficult at times. You need to go from level to level, world to world, it all takes ages. However, at some point the genius engineers and scientists of Peach came up with a new way of traveling the lands. The Warp Pipe. A special kind of underground tube network that allows you to cover vast distances in the blink of an eye. However, how did these things evolve throughout the years in terms of gameplay, design, use and story? Now all of this started quite early on. Even before Super Mario Bros in 1985, they were seen in Mario Bros, an arcade game that came out two years before. Here we see enemies emerge from these pipes and attack you, but that's all. They are extremely basic here, but all of this changed in the very next game. Because when the Super Mario Bros series came out, these games showed off a lot more special traits of this special transportation device. War pipes have appeared in nearly every Mario game since, and can actually be entered for the very first time. Using them to get to different places, helping Mario in his mission of saving the princess and stopping Bowser. But they are also seen in different places, for example sticking out of walls, and they're even found underwater. However, while they can certainly help you, they can also completely screw you over, because there are a ton of other things that can come forth from them. For example, enemies like the Goombas, Koopa Troopa, or even the feared Piranha Plants, who could be dwelling inside of it. So while you could use them to find riches underground or even to skip entire worlds, to make the game a lot easier, they can also be your end. Which makes it quite interesting in my opinion, because it's like a double-edged blade, cutting both ways. Some even require you to first beat the enemy hidden in it before you can enter, or waiting for it to go away so you can have your chance. All of this makes it a fun and surprising element found in the world, as well as a great place to hide easter eggs and treasures of all sorts. However, in the very next game, Super Mario Bros. 2, it all changes because they are temporarily replaced with pots. Personally, I would say that those don't work as well as the pipes, but luckily enough we only saw them in one game since this title was quite different from the normal Super Mario Bros. games. Now in Super Mario World, we again saw a change, because here we saw some war pipes act as mini cannons, shooting you high into the air. The reason why this was added is because in this game and Super Mario Bros 3, Nintendo started to use the world in more interesting ways. One of the ways they did this is by using the sky, a place where they didn't really build a whole lot, making it a good place to expand. And the pipe could play a big role in all of this, which they did both in this game and later ones as well. But after this, a whole lot changed, thanks to the development of technology, allowing Nintendo to build a 3D Super Mario game for the very first time. It was called Super Mario 64, which had a huge effect on the entire franchise. But the role of the war pipes is considerably reduced in comparison to the earlier 2D platformers. You arrive at the castle using one of them, and you also see them when going to Bowser, but that's about it. Clearly, it's barely used in this entire game. However, we do see them in one other place where they actually have a completely new role. They're seen at Tiny Huge Island, being called Shrinker Pipes. Now instead of transporting you to a different place, they change your size, either making you much larger or a lot smaller. This way you can explore this level in different ways, giving it all a bit of an interesting twist, which actually worked out really well. Now originally we had seen this concept in Super Mario Bros 3, where in World 4-6 a similar thing is done by using the magic doors. However here it's not that special, which might be the reason why they picked up the concept again when making Super Mario 64, this time using it in a more meaningful and impactful way. Which actually worked out extremely well! It made for two quite different experiences in this one level. After this, Nintendo would create another 3D Mario game where these weird pipes are seen once again. However, nothing really changed, just being used for secrets and getting around. The next time we would see some sort of change or new addition is a new Super Mario Bros. The reboot of the 2D Super Mario Bros games. Here tiny variants called Mini War Pipes are introduced, although they were also seen in Super Mario Bros 3 but weren't really used. They are half the size of a regular one and can be entered when you have a mini mushroom, being filled with secret treasure most of the time. So yet again, not too special? They still serve the same role, but this time there's a requirement to get into them. This makes getting to these secrets a lot harder, but still they have the same role for the most part. 
And this is a pattern we see time and time again. Nintendo might add some more things to the pipes, but their role will always be the same. The biggest new developments we would see and have seen are the Koopalings that use them in boss fights now, and that they also started to lead to small levels. So they got a bigger role in time, in the form of combat in the 2D games, and as a portal to smaller levels in 3D games. However, Nintendo's war pipes were getting a bit stale, never really changing sadly enough just staying the same the whole way through. However, in later games released for the Switch and Wii U, Nintendo finally kind of woke up and started to do some more interesting things with these weird transportation devices. Because in Super Mario 3D World, they introduced clear pipes, who have a slightly different role, a more interesting one for sure. Now, just like the normal ones, they are used for traveling distances too far for a normal jump to reach. However, they are transparent and actually allow you to change direction while in one but you can't really attack when going through one. So you're vulnerable to any enemies inside them like fuzzies and projectiles such as Firebro fireballs that can also travel through them. Clearly this makes traveling a lot more interesting already because you can actively choose your route and even need to watch out for enemies. All of this makes it a more active section of the game requiring you to pay attention, while this wasn't required with older types of war pipes. And in the recently released Super Mario Maker 2, we can see some really good examples of how this could work for a level and make it more interesting or interactive in a lot of ways. People have used them as a way to attack certain bosses in interesting ways, for example, or even for some sort of pipe maze making this a great and refreshing addition to the Super Mario games because the war pipes were getting quite boring to travel through. Nothing happened after all. However, if you do want some fun in action, then you can always have a look in the upper right corner where you will find more evolution of videos and even a playlist. I recently covered the power-ups, so go have a look. However, when it comes to Nintendo, they continued their work, and in the next 3D Super Mario game, they yet again added more and more to the war pipes. Because in Super Mario Odyssey, we see something amazing. A pixelated variety who have a similar design to the one seen in Super Mario Bros. If you enter one, everything changes. You will be going from a 3D world to a 2D one right on the wall, all of a sudden becoming a classic side-scroller Mario game for a bit. And their appearance outside of these 2D areas is more blocky and pixelated, resembling a 3D version of the Super Mario Bros. graphic, while their appearance in the 2D section is taken straight from Super Mario Bros. Although they're using modern colors instead of the classic ones. Now they appear in every kingdom aside from the Cap Kingdom and Dark Side, clearly being a big element in the entire game. Now in my opinion this is an absolutely genius thing and makes for some good variety in the world seen in Super Mario Odyssey. It combines 2D and 3D Super Mario elements perfectly, creating good pacing with a more pronounced transition to 2D and a more minimalistic one when going back to 3D. I would actually love to make a video about this specifically, so let me know if you would want that in the comments and I'll give it a shot. But there was another thing added in this game which was kind of similar to some stuff seen back in other games like Super Mario Sunshine, but still quite different from it all. The Moon Pipes, who are spawned by breaking moon rocks, who can only be found when the game's story is finished. Now just like some hidden pipes seen in Super Mario 64 and Sunshine, these sent Mario to new sub-levels. They are added as some sort of extra challenges so that there would be enough stuff to do after the main story. And while the purpose of these pipes is extremely similar to all the others seen in the entire franchise, there's one thing that sets them apart. Their design. Because they look extremely futuristic and space-like, which I absolutely love about them. They are one of the most well-designed objects seen in the entire game, both standing out and looking extremely cool. So clearly in these later titles, Nintendo finally saw the potential of the warp pipes and started to make more types of them. This really helped in making them more interesting, as well as actually adding something extremely fun to the levels, which was never really seen before. However, there are some other things you haven't seen before, like a lot of my other evolutional videos, for example on the power-ups. So go check those out by having a look in the upper right corner, where you will find a playlist as well. Now to end this video, I want to take a step back and look at what these pipes have done for the series in general. They were seen since the very beginning, becoming a staple for the franchise and adding mystery as well as danger to the world. Without them, the Mushroom Kingdom would be quite empty after all, and alternate routes would most likely completely disappear. And all of it started with a simple arcade game about a plumber. 
Hey you there, thank you for watching. Be sure to check the upper right corner and the screen right now, videos and playlists. Please check them out. Have a look, really, please do so. Also, like and subscribe, click the bell button and comments. Yes, do all these things and make Papa Wiley happy. The algorithm, help.